Um, I have a few quick items I want to do. I think they're quick. Then I would like Todd to take up the issues that I have here for him to bring you guys. This this is a, a, lo a long list of, of items that have been on my desk and in these studios <coughs> that we all make fun of. And I, I'm joking when I say it. Uh, <laughs> um, some of this is uh, quick and some of it isn't. Some of it's just to make you aware. So, comp plan. We, yeah. What I tell you? Formally? <laughs> Motion to open the meeting. Okay. Second. Second. All in All favor? In favor? Yes. yes. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. I'm sorry. So we have our village attorney here, we have our village attorney here, we have our village engineer here, we have the trustees here. Uh, uh, Trustee Guerrero couldn't make it, she's on vacation, but uh, she'll be able to look at this when she gets back and if I make any notes she can look at those or purge so, it. So the comp plan, you know, is coming up, uh, I didn't bring my book up, but uh, we have the comp plan, what's the date? 12th. The 12th next week at 6 o'clock at the senior center. Um, more or less, I think we've mostly, I don't know about entirely, but I think mostly for sure we've had put our comments in to Martin from the LA group and I think they're, I think they probably are in the, in the draft, am I correct in saying that? I haven't seen an updated draft. Yeah. Uh, in should. fact, I'm not sure anyone has. Okay. So, um, see what public comes and see what they... What, um, hopefully they looked at it on the website and and um, can be against or for something that they that's actually there. I think that that's going to be the first meeting on it, right? Yeah. I think that was we'll discussed. Yeah, I think what was discussed is that nothing was going to change to it until after that meeting. I believe yeah. okay. we discussed. Okay. okay. Because they want to get all the comments yeah. going that's and true. then start. They don't want to keep piecemealing it. That's right. Yeah. And he has ours, so yeah. Uh, that, okay. So along with that is zoning changes, but that's all part of the comp plan, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. I don't think if if if, uh, if I start to go out, if I start to go into executive session items uh, too deeply, tell me I'll stop and, and go into executive session. I say that for the following reasons: the clerk's position. Um, I don't. I, I, I have a candidate. You know. You all know. It, it, it's Lene. I, I've had one uh, interview discussion with her. No. Oh. You're in. Yeah. yeah. That, You're in. So. If you start talking. About okay, and I haven't and I haven't made my mind up yet. Okay. So, I will. I have to soon. Treasurer's position. We still are looking. Um. Yeah, the, the couple of people that I reached out to, there's one lady interested, and but she's interested in full time. And I don't know if we're ready for that yet. Is she a... Okay. She has no municipal experience. She only works in, a, in an accounting firm, but she's, you know, no... You know, she, would come, she needs to work with someone for a while, which we may not have that opportunity. Because we were trying to do both, right? Well, we're, we're, we're trying to do both at the same time. Yeah. We're trying to do both a clerk treasurer, and we're also trying to do a clerk and a treasurer. Yeah. Because nothing's, nothing's really as materialized. If Lene was to get the position, then we have to hire a part-time purchasing clerk. I just wanted to know that. Okay. To do what she does now. Um, John Jones, um, he has a copy of the... Uh, of, of resolution that will be either at the next week's meeting or two weeks from next week's meeting. We have to rescind the one we made and hopefully pass the one that's going to be before us before this month is out. He's fine with the with it. He read it. He's going to give it back to me this week. So that's not, there's no issues there that I know of. Yeah, because the old one had the police chief car. Yeah, we yeah. that. Yeah. He's like, I'll take it. I'll yeah. take the police chief car. Okay, Pablo Polito, when he gets accepted by the county, he'll be, his pay raise will be per the a contract a dollar twenty five per hour. Once he's appointed an operator. Mm -hmm. not no, not yeah. Well, he gets approved by the county, and then it's up to us to appoint, appoint him operator, and then he would get that dollar twenty five. Um, Scoofus's grant it's a hundred thousand um, dollars. 
Uh, we put in for some banners. We put in for an LED sign that something like a firehouse has. Mm -hmm. Something nice on a, maybe a brick platform. Um, we put in for that. Uh, some street furniture. Uh, some Christmas lighting. And um, uh, this, uh, this statue here. You've seen this? Oh, nice. I've and um, I thought it could go into North End facing West Point. Uh, Todd made a contact. Uh, the guy gave him a price. Mm -hmm. um, then I, I got on the phone and we talked. And we we're going to put the sculptor's name on a little plaque. And that was $11,000 decrease. Mm -hmm. He has an $11,000 name. <laughs> so are you guys okay with this? You don't want to put it in Memorial Park? Too much, Jim. I know. Too much, though. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I was thinking of that concrete teardrop across the street from Shades. All right. And uh, with a Roth iron fence around it, um, facing West Point. Um, Corning. I think Todd knows this. I've asked West Point if this was to materialize, if they could have a... After the commission, an annual, yeah, an annual thing the, where they have, each cadet has to come down whenever they want, in uniform, out of uniform, and salute this guy. Well, that's a good idea. Like a thing. Not a tear drop. Stop and get a pizza. A tradition. Yeah. Basically. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. So and you guys are all okay. California. It's going to I don't want. I, it's going to take a year to get this statue, so I need. I might just say yes or no. I say yes. Oh yeah. Do it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that, that planner has to move, is that what we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 yeah. But we can't put it like, because it kind of blocks the, the, the way, the walkway, because it's kind of like, you know, so we just have to move or make a base for it or something. Well, yeah. we have, we're going to have to pour a new, a new piece of concrete underneath it. So, yeah, yeah, okay. And then we'll, one thing that I also talked to the mayor about doing is we might have to look at is we probably should have it facing, even though it's facing West Point. And there might, is there a flag that's hanging on the, uh, on the, the Thayer Gate? There's a flag on... I think there's one on the, on the gate, right? Yeah, American flag? Not. I'll, I'll check to see. I, I would, I would prefer, me personally, I'd prefer that it faces a flag. Then that's why it's looted. And then... Well, we could put a flagpole right there, too. Oh, yeah, we could do that, too. Yeah, a small flagpole. Or something. Okay. Just, just thoughts, but... Well, you're okay? The, the grants covers it, so... I'll, I'll, call, I'll call the sculptor in law. Okay. Next, okay. Uh, next, um, um... This is executive session. Okay, mm -hmm. next is Quindell Washington. Uh, John told me to disregard his request to go to the sewer plant. Okay. John told me that. John Jones told me that. Um, we should probably get something ready for him to withdraw his request. Okay. I mean, I know his big picture is he wants to go up there and work, but he don't want to work with Pablo because when we're really, really, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 I, I, yeah, okay. We're on video, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, Tom, could you talk to us about the water tanks, the power washing? The power washing, the water tanks, we have a proposal, but we're going to have to go out to bid for it. Uh, Who's but, it from? Uh, that was from um, Pittsburgh Tank, the people that came to the tanks. So okay. in the spring, we, we probably should go out. If you've noticed, if you've driven around the water tank or driven past the water tanks, we have all the trees that could potentially affect those tanks uh, are been, have been eliminated. Um, and it makes it look a little bare right now, but once the uh, grass grows on the, on the hillside, it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be good. And then, now you can actually see how dirty the tanks are and, and how much uh, buildup is on them. One of the issues with having that buildup on them is that that uh, deteriorates the tank a lot faster. So uh, one of the things I've recommended is to actually have the tanks power washed and also re-inspected. It's been 10 years since we have last inspected them. Um, they need to be inspected for structural capacity, for the ability to provide you know, contain or cold potable water, but also to uh, meet OSHA standards for different uh, aspects. The OSHA regulations have changed twice since 2012 when we last inspected them. Um, so what I propose is in the spring is to put out a, a uh, proposal or request for a proposal, have some, uh, somebody come in, power wash the tanks, and do a complete safety inspection and provide us with information. Uh, somebody who's certified to be able to do that. So, so the person being certified for that, will they, will they also be clean the tank? Oh yeah, they'll clean. The okay, tank. all right. Because yeah. I'm just saying, there's no sense. I mean, I don't know if our guys clean the tank or not with power washes. You know, 
I, I would say that the, what was originally discussed uh, two, 10 years ago was that if we kept up with the cleaning every year, that would be something that we could do, uh, but we haven't touched them in 10 years. Yeah, so, I see how thick it is. I yeah. walked up there, I met one of your guys up there, and... and uh... Yeah, and, and what, what I'd also say is that if, if we... I like to try to keep uh, responsibility with, with people that have already established responsibility in the sense that Pittsburgh Tank was the ones that painted the tank, and I, so I went and got a uh, proposal from them just to see where the numbers would come in if they actually did it, because by doing that, they would keep the, the warranty of the painting and everything oh, okay. else continually going. Okay. So I think it was about, it, for both tanks, power washing it and doing inspection, it was, it was just under $70,000, I think. So it's, it's a, but there's... It's just under. It's okay. It's not, it's not okay. I mean, it's when you, power when you said that... $70,000 to power wash the So that's power washing paint and everything. It's just, no, it's not paint anything. It's not paint anything. It's just power washing. It's just power washing, but it's also, we have to use a specific uh, non-chemical cleaning cleaner. If That's why it was discussed that if it was kept up with every year, then there'd be a lot less issues. But now you have that buildup that's on there, and most of the time you need to use, uh, I'm not going to say a caustic, but an abrasive type material, and with it being right on the, the actual brook right there, they can't use that. So there's going to be a lot more time uh, to, to invest in that. You could, you could try with your own people, with the, the water department or the DPW, to, to try to, uh, to, to clean the tank, uh, you know, a section of it, see how long it takes and, and what the capability of actually doing it is. We could do that at any time. I would like to in, in try it out with some Dawn or something first. Yeah. Seriously, I mean, just, you know, because that's, that's, you know, it, it's good for the environment and everything else, so, you know. Yeah. Go with this up. Yeah, uh, dude, I'm telling you, that stuff is like fantastic. Cut grease, and it's soft yeah. on your hands. And, and it <laughs> takes care of the ducks, too, and the oil spill. That's right. So, but, I mean, that's just something. I, I mean, you know, I just, you know, I, I mean, I put 70 grand painting and everything else, but like I said, we now, haven't been doing it. There, there might be some touch-up painting and whatnot based on what's seen and included in there, because there is some minor repair work, uh, or but it's not repainting the tanks. Yeah. The no. tanks when we repainted them the last time, I think, was well over set, 600 or 700,000. in my head. Yeah. It was a substantial cost. Five fifty-eight to mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was right, so so what are we doing? Well, I, to me, I would like to look see what our guys could do it first. You know, to okay. Well, then, you, then you know, because water's yours. Yep. Let's go talk to. Uh, I'll talk to Jack. I'll talk Jack to John. And get a commercial. Can I talk to John uh, also. John. Jones. Oh yeah. 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 And get a uh, see how much uh, it costs to rent a commercial power washer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. How high does it go? Well, they're going to have to get something to go up there. Yeah, they have to get something to go up there and have all their fall protection. All yes. that has to be yeah. okay. factored in. And then we would eventually... I'll, I'll talk to them first. I'll I would like it done in the spring. Yeah. Not yeah. summer. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. Spring no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. One of the things that I brought up, too, uh, while I was looking at is once it's power washed and clean, um, you have the ability, uh, I believe, I mean, you have... That's the entrance way in the village. From yeah, that right. It's almost a good spot to do, potentially, to have a nice welcome to the village of Holland Falls on one of the tanks or something like that, to, now that it's opened up, so it's I, something to think about. Why, why wouldn't we just, you know, not to take away from our guys doing it, but, it never, you know, there's always, you know, spring comes and there's a thousand things to do already, which is why we're in the situation as it is. You know, we don't never have enough manpower, we always have our other stuff to do. I mean, why wouldn't we just try to bid it out and just see what we would get for bids? Instead of just relying on Pittsburgh, I know you want to go with Pittsburgh. No, 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 I no, I, no, 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 I, 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 I want. I got a budgetary number for them just to see what the number yeah. was. But it definitely has to be bid out. Yeah, I, I, let's see what the bids come in at. I mean, that kind of it just seems a little high. I mean, I don't think power washing should void any type of warranty here. I, I would agree with you on that. And I don't know what they would charge us for an inspection. You know, whatever. I'm okay with an inspection, but seventy thousand dollars. I mean, that sounds like a lot. I, I could be. I could be wrong. But. I'm sure there's, you know, next year's going to, this year's going to be tough for folks. So municipal jobs are probably going to be what a lot of contractors are looking for because, you know, nine out of ten times they pay within 30 and 60 and 90 days. And I think the numbers are going to get sharp. So I would just, I would say talk to John and Jack, but I would put it out to bid just to see where the bids come in. Because if we get a bid for 35 grand, And, and they could be in and out of here in a week, as opposed to our guys taking three, four weeks with ropes and ladders and, and lifts. And it doesn't cost us other, other than an ad in the paper to, and a little, you know, TLC to put a bid out. I, I, just a suggestion. It I, would I be a water fund. 
as well? Yeah. So, Mayor, I don't know you. Well, I, I, you know, Gary wants to check in house, and that's. No, I, want, I just want to see. So you know, you know what? So you still do yeah, that. Now, yeah, what yeah. they have to do is the, you have to make sure that they get the rental price on the, all the equipment, the, the, whatever the lifts are, and power washer, and soap, and and uh, time a little bit of a time frame, even though we know things come up. Is it going to take a week, two weeks? If they say a week, that means two weeks. That's right. fine. I got it. Yeah. I got it. It's life. Okay. Can I make a suggestion? But at the same time, we should go out. Well, I, I would get all that information together, but I think what you could do is it, is take take a 10-foot by 10-foot section on the worst tank right now and just see if they can... If That's they, my plan. Though. Let's see if they can if, start... If it doesn't come off, then we have then, all then the... Then we have to do industrial stuff and everything. <laughs> exactly. yeah, I just want to yeah. see if they can do a little area yeah. to see what they can do, yeah. how high they can reach. And how long did it take to get it off? And exactly. does, it, yeah. does it look good? If, you know, and I mean, you know, I mean, even if they did it on a weekend, that it's cheaper, if they can do it, it's even cheaper paying somebody overtime than it is hiring somebody. Because oh, you got three, you can have three guys on a weekend doing it. You can have Jack, you can have, you know, and the two other guys that are at a part time or everything else. So I'm just, that's all I'm just saying that way. I mean, all right, know. Gary, please check it out. Yes, sir. At the same time, let's go out for a bit. Okay. All right, cable agreement. Um, nothing new to report there other than our cable agreement's been expired for a while now. And I'm talking, it's difficult with these. It's hard to get these guys. And I was hoping to be able to do the same thing I did last time. Ten-year agreement, $50,000, 5000 a year to the 4th of July. That's been over with now for a few years. They, that was under Time Warner. Spectrum doesn't do that. But they've indicated to me, please indicate it, that possibly they would... Possibly they, part of the agreement could be that they give us the TV hookup for the senior center without it costing us. So, if that's the case, I would agree to that, I guess. Do we buy out anything uh, from Clip or Verizon? For oh. files? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. 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 Can I make a suggestion on this too? I know it's totally done. In the cable agreement, is there any way we can get them to agree to remove all the funk cables? Because they don't, whenever a cable has an issue, they don't take it down. They just run a new cable. Mm -hmm. And now we have literally, even just in Nandiora, where we're, we're dealing with all these cables while we're trying to do work and stuff, it, it's just, it's a mess. And there's a lot of them will call up and they'll come out like, oh, that cable's dead. Well, take it down. It's, it, and why, why is it still there? Well, there's it's one right there on Main Street, too. It's all cable? It's a okay, cable, well, yeah. yeah. Uh, whatever, whatever the cable company yeah. is, yes. Yeah. They call, it's, it's cheaper, instead of trying to fix one of those, yeah. it's cheaper than just run a new one than it is. And then they leave the old one up because they usually just attach it to it. It's crazy. You can try and put that in the contract yeah. that yeah. they have to remove. Yeah. 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 Okay, the next I have is cell antennas. So, um, <laughs> uh, the one at the senior center should be being turned on any day now. Um, um, uh, the village hall, the lease agreement, which is a separate lease than the senior center, uh, is making the rounds at, uh, at Verizon with, uh, does, she said to me, it doesn't seem like any problems. Um, they're applying for a building permit this week at the town for the, for the, uh, for which antenna? The DPW antenna? No, this for is here. antenna. Okay, so that that's this week. Um, um, and so, uh, Elisa, help me here. Uh, I want the, would like the board to know that on the agenda coming up will be, um, will be what? Something with the cell antennas um, and well, the Moreau Balancing Act. Yeah, we're done with the uh, antennas that are on village property. Now the next thing is the antenna, or really the, the, the tower, it's, it's, it's a short utility pole, it's like the senior center that they want to put at, um, at the DPW site. So right. again, that's in the village, but the property is owned by the town, so the town has requested a mineral balancing test, which would theoretically, if you decide that it's good public interest to have that antenna there, you could, in fact, uh, exempt them from from the, uh, the zoning law. I would, uh, I mean, my recommendation, I know we've kind of briefly discussed it 
I would recommend that the town we it's a ask, request the town planning board, the consolidated planning board, to okay. give us a suggestion. Okay, so here's I, I don't disagree with that, and um, I have a meeting this Thursday with Eric it has to do with the fire department. Mm -hmm. it's, he's requested the meeting. I don't know what it's about, uh, but uh, I'm going to bring this up because um, at least please correct me. Here's the thing: if the planning board doesn't want to do this, it could stretch it out to way over a year from now that that happens, and also put this in jeopardy. That's what we've been told. I so, know. Verizon. So I don't want, I don't mind asking the planning board, but if the planning board has a different opinion than maybe we do, my suggestion is we go with our opinion, because it's going to hold up. I mean, that's a long time. Yeah, it is. It At least talk to, well, talk to it about it. Talk. Yeah, I, I, think, I think what the mayor is saying, which is true, is if they're not exempt from the zoning law, first of all, you would have to find that it's not in the public interest to exempt them and that they should, in fact, be subject to the zoning law, which means they would have to, at a minimum, go to the planning board. I don't know if they would have to go to the zoning board. I, I don't know. But if they did, now you're looking at months. And at least months. So that's going to push off, that's going to push off the, the installation of the DPW site, which of course is like the third hub that you need to cover the entire village. Clint told us that that's needed for the southern end of the village. So, you know, they, they could certainly go forward with here, but it won't cover the, the southern end of the village. The other thing to bear in mind is that no matter what decision is made or when, there will likely be litigation. And if there is litigation, then the question is, would it only be against the, the town planning board and possibly the ZBA, depending on where they have to go, or would the village also be in it? And I can't really answer that question. I don't particularly see a cause of action against the village if it goes to the planning, if you don't exempt them. But I don't know, given what has happened in the past, whether or not you would just get thrown into the mix. If you exempt them and there's litigation, the town will also be known because they're a necessary party. So there's no way they're going to get out of it if they're not involved in the mineral balancing test. So it's, it's really up to this board. Uh, I do agree that it will delay the installation of the, of, of the DPW site if they're not exempt from the zone. So, Zoning or the Monroe Balancing Act? Zoning. The Monroe Balancing Act, the Monroe Balancing Test is simply one municipality. Saying this, it's okay to be. It's, you know, it's, we think it's in the public interest and, and the benefit to the village outweigh, of granting them an exemption outweighs the benefit to the village of having them go to the planning board. That, that's all that says. So just be thinking, you know, I, I agree with you. I don't have a problem with it. I just, I don't want it to be a, I don't want it to be a new, whole new avenue for someone to exploit. It, it, oh. By, by doing it. It, it. There's an avenue either way. Yeah. There, there's an avenue either way. The question only is, is the village a name party or not? Which they're going to, we're going to be no matter what, so. Well, I don't see a cause of action, but... I don't either, but... <laughs> All right. That's the update there. We'll have to make a decision soon. Todd, uh, increasing the supply of water. Yes. Report. Yeah, so we got a report, uh, the Schumacher report came back. Uh, GZA did the actual report. Um, we can increase the height, I believe it's 1.9 feet up there which will generate an additional 38 million gallons of storage while the, while the reservoir is at full height. Um, their costs that are in there, though, are significant, and I had some questions about it, and I actually reached out to them last week. I haven't got a response back on there. Um, one of the things that they showed was actually creating a, a, a new embankment over the spillway. If you're familiar with Bog Meadow, you know the spillway that's to the, I guess that'll be to the west, I think. 
uh, of it when you're looking at the edit on the left hand side. They looked at doing it in a, a new embankment over top of that. And one of the questions I had was just why can't we put a cap on right. the, the concrete that's there? So they haven't responded to me yet on that, and I'm and I'm wondering if uh, um, to me to me it makes sense that I could actually take a 1.9 foot high piece of concrete, make it two and, and, or two. Yeah. Well, you can't no, go two, yeah, yeah. 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 but the, the, the exact height and then and then it create just basically yeah. almost like a coping stone across. Drill the holes, pin it. Yep, exactly. So they're. I'm sure they're looking at that now to find out because I think that would be significantly cheaper oh, than, yeah. than what they proposed. I think they're in like eight hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, range. it'll be night and day. It, it would be correct. So I'm waiting for a response on that. And the structure of that thing is still sound. Up there. Oh yeah. yeah. So I mean, the, 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 the funny thing with water is, and everybody looks at like you look at the Hoover Dam and it's like, oh, it's got to hold back all this water. It's actually only holding back a, 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 a sliver of water on the backside because no matter how much water you pile up behind it, it doesn't create additional pressure. It's kind of a weird. Uh, uh, phenomena, but when it comes down to it, I can't see that as being uh, an issue that would require them to do what they proposed in there. And I'm not sure if they were just thinking that would be the cheapest way, but it doesn't make sense to me to, to go in that manner. I, unless they come back and say the DEC won't allow that, here's why, or something like that. But when it comes down to it, I, I feel just adding a like a, a top yeah. stone across the whole top of that would be, or even even putting forms up and pouring two uh, right. 1.9 extra feet of concrete on it. Would be a better way of doing it. So I'm waiting for their response, and I'll provide that to the village, uh, you know, as we go. But I think that um, you're you're looking at 38 million extra gallon, uh, 38 million uh, gallons of storage additional. You use just around half a million gallons a day, so that would provide you with 76 days worth of additional uh, storage within that reservoir. How is the water supply now? 77 percent right now. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Tom, we're still coming off the mountain. What about lower bogs? So lower bogs, they came. We asked them to evaluate three options. They actually, the first option was to fix lower bog as it is to meet the current day. The cost was well over, I think, three and a half million dollars. We weren't. We we already thought that that wasn't going to be an option. The second option was, I think, um, uh, to reduce the height of it. I think six feet they proposed, and they could do that, and and then um, create a conforming. Uh, dam at that point, um, and, and I'm just thinking off the top of my head of what's in there, but they're, they're in the reports. Uh, I think that was like $1.8 million. And then there was like a, a million dollars was to, to breach that and basically not have it be a dam anymore. And that, that had a cost tag, I think 800000 to a million or something like that. But it is something that we probably should definitely take a look at further as to how we're going to approach that. To me, Right now, we've met the DEC's requirements to get all of our uh, emergency action plan in place to submit, um, you know, our detailed our, our, our plan <coughs> work for it. So now the question becomes, what option do we want to try to pursue, and what avenues of funding, what uh, grants that are out there, do we do we go after? So we can hold the DEC off of my mind uh, as we as we right. pursue pursue funding. Um, but those two, both those projects. Are going to require, I think, uh, either bonding by the village or finding grant money outside the, the village. And I think the grant money is the first option we should go after. And that grant money can look at that cap also, correct? Correct. Okay. Yes. So we have the emergency action plan. Sorry, Mary. No. We have the emergency action plans filed with the state now, so that gives us the ability to apply for the state grants. The problem is the state grant that normally comes out in June hasn't come out yet. So it's, they're, they're a full seven months right. behind right now. So more likely the 2022 grant cycle for, for dams is, it was only going to be for planning. And now the 2023 should have the, uh, the, the funding for actual implementation. Well, at least we have time now with all those reports done. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So those reports, uh, what we should do though is if the, if the board members can just review them. They're very, they're only like 15, 20 pages each. Take a look at them if there's any questions that come at them, because we do have to file those with the state. Um, I don't want to file the upper bog one until we get that no, question right. answered, because the last thing I want to do is tell the state we're going to do that embankment if it doesn't have to be. If we can right. do it cheaper, let's, let's show them that, that that's what we're doing. Uh, but we probably within the next six to eight weeks, we should have those approved by the village board to be sent to the, uh, to the state so that they can uh, check off those requirements. And but the state has to approve that if we decide on putting a cap on it. That is correct. Yep. Okay. Todd, what is the, I have the next thing, a Schumacher report. Well, the, 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 the Voight engineering reports were the basis for the Schumacher reports. Okay. So Schumacher reports, we just talked about both of them. Those are the two reports yeah, that came yeah, in, yeah. upper and lower bottom. 
so those are those are what I just mentioned, where we have the the uh, the upper bog. We can, we can increase the height of the spillway, mm -hmm. and in the lower bog, we can do one of three options, which is fix it to meet the current requirements as it is, to lower it to meet current requirements, or to breach it in a sense to to eliminate requirements. Um, one thing that's actually nice though is that that water is impounded right now, and it's about another 20 to 25 million gallons, even if we lower the height. So it's another supply that's there if we need it. Okay. Um, okay. But just, just thinking in my head, which sometimes gets me in trouble. Um, if we end up, let's say we end up getting a price to raise the cap on 1.9 inches, uh, yep. one foot nine inches, yep. and then we have to do this thing with the lower bog. I mean, we can't like work with. I don't know, West Point, Army, Corps Engineers, don't they have a demolition crew? Don't they need to practice? Like, can't they come up with something where they're dam busting or something like that? Do we do that anymore? Uh, they they did more used to. They actually, they yeah. did. They did the one that's down on um, um, Station Road, the one right. that was just to the left. It was a very small one. Yeah. And it only released like 3,000 gallons yeah. of water. Which I don't know, but if we pumped it out, if we pumped, I don't know, I'm just, I'm thinking outside the box, so, I, you know. I understand completely, and, and, I'll, and I'll ask the question. Look, if, they, if it costs them a, a chuckle, it might be worth it. If they mm -hmm. come I've got a whole battalion. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Send them up, and just send a demolition crew up. Yeah. I'll believe you, I have guys that would be more than happy. <laughs> they would love to do that stuff. They would but love to do The it. village residents that live on the brook coming down, though, wouldn't be very happy yeah. with it. That water's going to end up at 293 anyway. <laughs> so we'll just have to figure it out. All right. Just, I, don't I don't know where I'm getting any of this, but <laughs> Restore New York. Restore New York. We, so I just did the building on Mountain Avenue. Yep. So we put, we put that uh, bid out. It came in. The contractor held his number. We actually uh, got we no, you notif uh, noticed to award him back in November. He accepted the notice of award, but the discussion at that time was to wait until mid-February to end of February to actually sign the contract so he could start work in March because the weather wasn't the best to do it during that time. So they're all ready to go. Uh, we've already talked with Phil at the building department. Um, there's no building permit requirement. So now we're just waiting for you know, the next six weeks to pass so we can start the work out there. That's a the funding's all in place. Um, we received $167,000 from the state. We received, um, what was the, there was another amount we got from the county. So all, all, and then the, the property owner put $74,000 into escrow with the village. So. That was, that's the uh, Jansen property, right? Uh, so I, I go, I go, Salat, I. Uh, Sam and I always say pink building across from the firehouse. The big building. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I know. Okay. Sal, Sal Aguilar, I think is his name. Yeah, I think it's Aguilar. Yeah. Okay. So that'll long time coming, but I think you're going to see it this year. Yep. All right, Todd. Uh, I hate to do this one. Merns Avenue. Yes. I kind of know about it, but. So Merns Avenue, we Sue we, Kelly, Merns Avenue. Yep. So the Sue Kelly, Kelly money, too. the Sue Kelly money All has fun. taken three turns in the last six months. The first thing they told us was it was completely gone, and then they came back and said, "No, it's not completely gone. You have one hundred eighty-nine thousand um, dollars." And then they came back and said, "No, it's not one hundred eighty-nine thousand dollars. You have one hundred nine, but you had to fill it, finish it by September of this past year, twenty-two. So you were going to lose it at that date." Um, so I dug into a little bit more. The mayor made some phone calls. It came back, and that was the, that was the county telling us that. It came back that we actually still have $189,000, rough numbers, $189,000 for that. So we put together, um, we met out there with the mayor, with John Jones, uh, walked the site. We have uh, the, some plans getting put together so we can actually move that project forward and push to have that done in 2023. Using funds from there as well as funds from the uh, the CARES Act, I think yep. it is, mm -hmm. to do that project. So we're, we're we have a goal of, of spending about four hundred thousand dollars out there, which is a combination of the two, uh, to correct the um, some little bit of sidewalk repair, mostly curb repair, stormwater repair, and then milling and repaving the whole road. Okay. And please, from, from Barry Hill, from Barry Hill South. And and please, you noticed or you heard just now, and this is really important. Uh, there's no money for drainage off the nine W. That's not going to be taken care of yet. We we have no way. No, they no, not there saying anything. I right? think our responsibility is the village road up there, yeah. and at least being able to handle what's what, getting to the village road. What gets to the village road? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, that, and that's the what state we're doing. and the state representation and the state representatives need to hear. We're not the only municipality that the state has done this to. 
and and they dump a lot of water off of IW onto Burns, and we're, we're now we're spending almost a half a million dollars to deal with that problem to try to mitigate it when it hits the village street. But those folks who live on that side of IW, I, I, you know, it's 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 going to be a concerted effort to just plead with state DOT and state representatives. You know, when they knock on your door during election time, you need to fill their ear full of whatever you want to fill it with because they created that big problem and now we're spending money to try to fix it. Mm -hmm. On our side, which doesn't really fix it, it just, it takes it's it, it somewhere else. It, 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 it yeah, it, it diverts it in the right way, but it's not well, stopping it. What I will tell you too is that the, that some of that water that's, that meets, that comes off of 9W gets the MERNs, is being directed, that well, was all of it's being directed further downhill. Yeah. But the piece that actually makes its way towards the wetland that eventually drains through Satterley into Ondior and out was taken into account as part of the Ondior and Satterley design sure. that's being done right now, but the Ondior work that's being done right now. Sure. So when you go down there and you see that we're putting four foot diameter pipes in the yeah. ground in Ondior, that's why, because we're, we're, we're picking up a lot of that flow sure. that, that's making yeah, its way down. That, the, that water off of 9W has probably caused half, if not more, of our wall issue yeah. on Merns yeah. that affects below by Royal Park and, you know. Uh, Todd, uh, I know there's a deadline, with, there's a, somewhat of a deadline with this uh, Merns Avenue money. The, they, they asked about that, they didn't finalize it. We believe that the deadline is September 30th of 2023, but I haven't gotten that ready yet. So that's what we're, we're just going to plan on that being the deadline and we're going to get the uh, the design approved and get it going. Right. That's great. Water meters. Um, so, uh, oh, Lord. <laughs> no, water meters. So, I think there's two things here I want to say. Two, when I say water meters, one is the in and the out of the, at the plant. I think that that's something we should have. Mm -hmm. I don't know how everyone else feels uh, about it. I, I had a discussion with uh, Peter Kelleher of the health department about this, and we're going to come up with a discussion. I, he doesn't think we need to have it in both places. More likely, we're just going to have it right at the uh, at the plant, so we know how much water leaves the plant each day. Because what one of the ideas was doing there, and also when you said the in and the out, was also doing the out of the tanks. So we, we know how much we're producing each day, and then how much is being used each day out of the tanks. What they're thinking is that it, it basically averages itself out. So as long as you know what's leaving the plant, it doesn't matter how much is in the tank. Uh, you know. It, it, so so you're looking at possibly a a water meter flow in the tank, in the what, water of what leaves the plant. Correct. Yep. Okay. Now would, that would also reduce the cost on how much it would cost to do this because now you're doing going from potentially three meters down to one. Now do we need to get more um, computer programs to do that? Because we were talking about modifying up there, remember? Mm -hmm. We had a conversation. We we have, but I I would say, uh, and that's another discussion I had with Steve Gagnon at the health department is uh, that we probably don't want to get into that discussion right now okay. because eventually, I think you all know if you've been up to the water plant, we're going to have to do something in the water plant. It might not be in two years, five years, ten years, but eventually we're going to have to do something. Right now, I think that we can do it with just a, a normal totalizer that you can read that, that gives you each day up on the wall is just a little readout that says you use 520 or you produce 526,000 gallons of water yesterday. And then it just says that in the next period you produce this one or you use this much and it just keeps track of it. To get into something more elaborate than that, which probably should be as part of the actual upgrade to the plant that will be down the road. Yeah. Is there a way we, not to get too elaborate, but if we know that we normally are between 480 and 540, 520 a day, mm -hmm. if it hits 550, like an email should go out, a text should go out. Yep. So I don't know how elaborate that is, but I mean, you know, at the bank, if you you could set your debit card, then if you if you purchase over one hundred fifty dollars, you get a text message. Yeah. So we should be able to have something that says it goes to the mayor, it goes to the water commissioner, it goes to the clerk. And that's the meter really? that that's the meter that I'm looking at right now. And they'll do that. And it will do. It's actually instantaneous, and it, you can actually log into it in the cloud online. Perfect. So what you can do is the jack will get a text message if it. If it goes under over, you know, five hundred fifty, we set the number, whatever you want to do. It's similar, yeah. you know, what 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 they have in the in the town right now for the meters they have in. 
they actually had that set for each one of the meters in the houses too. So they've been able to find places where they have issues yeah. uh, pop up, you know, because of that. All right. So it's it's a good system. I don't think that we should get. And Brian, you'd ask like something really elaborate. Right now, I think elaborate's not good because nothing in that plan is elaborate, yep. and we want to no, keep it kind of, you know. Uh, get, get, have it give us what we need, but not go overboard. Because eventually, when when something has to be done there in the, in the plant, that will all get tied in together. At, in the, in the I understand that. I agree. But I want Jack. I don't know how many times the mayor has asked him for reports. I know it's him. I think the word is. He's got to start doing that. You know, even if he has a meter, Todd, that mm -hmm. stuff should come down to us. Yeah. I I, I agree. And what with that meter, we could actually have a, one of the readers. Uh, sitting right on, right in the um, the conference room downstairs. Yeah. So you can see every day. You can see the instantaneous flow. Yeah, okay. on. Even if it's on like a little screen. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I mean, one of the, uh, other option too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's that's a very good idea. Another thing that that I actually brought up too, and I'm gonna, uh, you can bring up the Jack, uh, but but Justin brought up to me was we should probably put. You can get them very inexpensive right now, but it put up a little cellular read camera at the reservoir, and you'd be able to see if with the stick in the in the, in the actual reservoir, you'd be, without even going up there at any time, you could log in and say, okay, we're at you know seventy four percent, or we're at this, we're at that. And I, I love that idea too. And it, it's a minimal cost, but it, it, it gives you uh, flexibility when on the weekends. The, when the dam when the dam was down to forty five percent, yep, and you could see half of the bottom of the dam. Mm -hmm. That's when Jack was supposed to go up there and put this ruler. Well, now we're up to 77, and you're gonna, it's going to take a scuba diver. I'm, and I'm not making a joke, but, you know, that's Jack. But I don't, please, I want to move on, because Jack pisses me off. Jack upsets me. Sorry. Okay. What is the VRI report? Okay, so while VRI was there, when we had the issue with the, not having a licensed person... Uh, VRI was a company that, that was hired through me to come in to, to run the plant. As part of that, I asked them to do a review. I'm just going to move over here. I'm just leaving this for the, for the other uh, uh, member, but I will leave more real quick. So I, I left, um, uh, while they were there, I asked them to do just a review of the plant and provide some feedback of issues they see, what could be done better, what's still being work you know, well right now. Um, and, and there's about a four or five page report that we can get out to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it was actually sent out to everybody already, but we provided it again yeah. uh, oh, by BRI. And that was by their <coughs> licensed uh, operator. Things were, you know, the, the, there's not really a true set SOP where somebody could walk in the door, grab it, and say, okay, here's all the tests we got to do each day. Here's every the time that we got to do the tests. Here's the location of the tests. Things like that you would typically have uh, on hand at a, at a water plant when you walk in because, you know, that situation happens. You know, somebody gets sick or somebody, you know, yeah, has, has, has an issue. We, we, we need to, and it did, things just got to keep rolling. So they mentioned that. They mentioned um, uh, some of the things that we have up there are kind of archaic where they're, 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 they're outdated. They're still good, but we probably could make them a little bit better with some simple modifications. So there's different mm -hmm. ideas that they had in there. Obviously, the big thing is, you know, the plant is original from 1959 with some minor upgrades in the 70s. It's still producing water that, that meets all the drinking water requirements and, and everything along, the, along those lines. But eventually, we're going to have to take a hard look at a public upgrade. Um, yeah, so that, that's in there as well. And the Hazen, Hazen, sort, the Hazen report on the TOCs? Yeah, so the Hazen report, we actually had to bring them in. We, if you remember, we had issues with the TOCs, the total organic carbons. And what that was, was we were doing tests. We were doing one test a month, we were sending it out, and you don't get it back for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then when you get it back, if it fails, you don't have a chance to do another test. Because you could do multiple tests if you want. And it was like, the tests were like 65 bucks a piece. So Jack was doing one, sending it out, comes back, it fails, he had to report it to the health department. What you're allowed to do in any month is you're allowed to do multiple tests. And then you're not allowed to do an average, too. Now, what the TOCs is, the problem that we've determined by bringing Hazen Sawyer in and look at this, is the TOCs is the amount of total organic carbon that's, that's in, the, in the water when, you first, when it first enters the plant versus when it leaves the plant. There's a reduction that you've got to get, right? 
The problem that we're having, which was actually news to me, and the mayor and I for years thought the sediment in the lower reservoir, which is right there, was causing an issue and giving us these TOC issues. That's not the issue. You actually have super clean water coming into the plant and getting settled out even further in the plant. So when you test the water at the entrance to the plant and then test it again at the exit of the plant, you didn't, you weren't able to remove enough of the total organic carbon because there was hardly any there. So it, oh. you're still way under the limits, but there's a removal requirement that you weren't able to meet, and that's what was giving you the, <laughs> the boil notices. So what we did was we brought them in. So, we so wait a minute, hold on. I'm okay, yeah. Hold on, Todd. Yep. So uh, some, me, me mm -hmm. and some folks on, on, on at home or whoever won't watch this, mm -hmm. because a lot of things get thrown around at meetings. That don't drink the water. If you have kids, they're going to die. They're, if elderly will get sick. So just so I understand what you just said, the water coming into the plant, those carbons were so low that doesn't matter because according to the Board of Health, they say if the, if the number comes in at 1, mm -hmm. even though the requirement may be 2.2, mm -hmm. if you're if the carbon comes in at 1, you have to get below 1. That is correct. Well, no, you it's actually not even below 1. It's it's the fraction. You need to remove a percentile. On of it. the so, 1. Of the 1. Even though the 1 may be you, lower you, than, you, the, than the requirement. Right. Yeah, that right. is correct. Yeah, so that's where the issue comes in. That's that. We so, have the issue with the point nine. Exactly. That was a point yeah. nine. So we didn't get to a one. So what they're saying is that if you were at two and it needed to go to one, but we got to one point oh one and the, the the max you can have is three, it was still a violation, even though the water is perfect. So the violation gets triggered even though I'm below the requirement yep. because the reduction formula didn't occur yep. because it came in so low into the plant. That is correct. So what they're saying is that I mean they, they actually take a fresh water, you know, came in Say here's fresh water. We'll say fresh water. Yeah, free, coming free, into the plant, and, and here's what's going out. This, when you're looking at it, it looked like it was drinking water already coming right. into the plant. So it's very hard to get a removal percentage out of something when it's so low already. So that was that. That was news to me. I honestly thought we had a turbidity issue, which was causing yeah, that, that. Came up. That it, came up. It did. And then when they when they actually looked at this and they came back and they said, no, that's not the issue. Because what they did then was they did uh, what we call jar tests. So we use a polymer right now to, to flocculate, which is what you do is you try to um, get all those TOCs together in, with, a, with an additive and it, and it uh, adheres to them. And then we're able to uh, pull it out easier. Then try, so instead of trying to pull out you know, a, grain of, uh, a grain of sand, we got all the grain, grains together attached to something else. Mm -hmm. And then we pull it out at, you know, bigger. Mm -hmm. well, they did that on like six different tests and they used different composites and we use what we currently use versus some other ones. What we currently use is actually very good and it works very good. We were just not maintaining the, the right amount that was being added based on how much flow was coming into the plant. So that was what was causing a little bit of issue. So now we've adjusted that and we've had, I don't know, had any TOC issues since that point. So Hazen and Sawyer has at this point at least corrected the issue and we know how we're, we, we need to move forward, but that was something that uh, you know, they'll tell you if you ask them. There's no issue at all with drinking water. Even to the point where Steve Gagnon, who is the director of the health department, even went on record with the, with yes. the local newspaper and said, there's no, there's no, there's issue, no issue here. Water. It's just, it's a, it's a, you almost have pristine surface water, so pristine that it's caught, that's what's causing your issue. And how do we get all this information to the this issue is going to stay with us. We have the report from Hazen and Sawyer. We could put that out, put it right on the on the um, uh, thing. I would recommend putting that out as well. Uh, maybe not the VRI one because that one we, we can look at a little bit more. But the the Hazen and Sawyer report is very straightforward. This, it tells you that. This, it tells you it's not, this issue yes. is going to be with us oh, for a long time. Yes. Yeah, coming here. What did you guys do to rectify? Yeah. I'm suggesting that what we're talking about now. Get synthesized and sent out there. Oh, that, that's we could do that definitely, right? Yep. Because I think we put not, that full report on there, and then yeah. we could do a. I would do just a, a, a <coughs> paragraph that's almost like a layman's paragraph that says this is what the report says. Right. And you know, if, if not, then the myths, lack of a better term, start yeah. again. Yep. You cost us a lot of money. You did this. You did this. Let's just spread it out. Let people be able to understand. Does everybody understand how I explained that? I know it's kind no, of... It, it's, no, no, yeah. In, yeah. If, you, if you go up there and actually look at the water coming in... Oh, it's it, crystal clear. It's crystal clear. I mean, it, it's almost blue. It almost looks like an ocean. It, it does. It, it, it does. It, and you can actually... You can drink it. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. So it's, it is crystal clear. So we can do that, you know. right? Get a little blood yeah. drop. Exactly. Yeah.
we can put it right on the website and we can put a blurb with it saying here's a full report but here's a, a, a layman's analysis mm -hmm. of the, what it is. Yeah. 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 Well, we hear it. Yeah, we're rectifying. Yeah. That too. Yeah, we can set it out with a water bill probably yeah. as well. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. And we hear a lot of the brown water. That's you know that's with their pipes and stuff like that. That's something we can't. You know, brown water gets the, the issue with the brown water, and I think we've got a, a better right now. Uh, you, you all probably know Pat Patterson has left the town. Yep. Gary Boyce is down there now, and he's watching the water department. He calls me, he calls Jack, he calls everybody, John, and lets them know if we're doing something. The only time we should have an issue now with brown water that's not known beforehand is if they actually physically have a fire down the town and go and, and hook onto a hydrant and have to do something. We won't know immediately. But anything they're doing down there with hydrants or whatnot beforehand, a phone call now comes in, and I ask them to call us 48 hours in advance if possible, mm -hmm. so we could actually put it out and say we're 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 doing testing in the town. Our town's running fire hydrants. You're gonna you're gonna you could potentially experience some. Uh, some and and if we have a broken pipe that's what yep. unexpected, you're gonna get some brown water. Exactly. So I mean, you know, but we got that Christmas you know, day. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you have to get a rope pipe for Christmas? Yeah, right there on Cousin's Avenue. It was the, the, valve. the valve. The nuts had rusted off, oh, really? and the valve came apart. Oh, okay. Right. It was a pressure valve to send water down to Church Street. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's it. They got to replace it with a booster or something that has to do with the fire hydrants. Oh, yeah. That's, you know, so. Increased pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's going to do the, um, you know, I'm going to write it up. I'll write it up. Okay, here. Thanks. Okay, I, can, uh, I just want to mention three things that you got to remember going to cost some money. W walls, we still have a, I don't know, Pete Gurley's wall, and God only knows who else's wall. Um, dump truck, um, the guys are supposed to be looking at a new dump truck, and... Um, are they tough? Go ahead. Huh? No, go ahead, I'm sorry. And depending on what Eric wants to talk to me on Thursday morning, I know I have them because I know our truck fire trucks are old. They look new, but they're old. Uh, I have down fire trucks, so eventually, eventually that's gonna. What's the dump truck for? The, the dump truck is for, we have two large dumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One's up at the uh, by yeah, the water plant, yeah. the eyesore that's up uh -huh. there. And I told John to call the guy that does the auctions, so and let's get rid of that. It's easy, right? You know, but uh, they want to replace it, but not with a not with a, a large, uh, not with a large one, but not with another small one, something yeah. in between. Yeah. Uh, so they, instead they, of two hundred thousand, it could be one hundred and ten. But they, the, the one, the one that was being discussed that I that I know of is there's actually three of them sitting at Healy right now yeah. in Middletown. Yeah. They're they're a pick truck, so but it's on a, a Chevy fifty five hundred body, so it's it could be used as a plow truck, a smaller plow truck with a ten foot plow on it. It sure. could also be used. Uh, for that that pig truck, yeah. but you are looking at a hook truck in here. A hook truck, yeah. yeah. But you're you're looking at actually more than half the cost by going that way. You could buy two of those. But we have that budgeted, or this this is what they want. Or? Well, we have we have some money in the uh, capital reserve for that. Oh, okay. We also came out. Tim came out with that. What uh, trucks we could save, yeah, yeah, salvage? Yeah. Others we couldn't. The dump truck came about because the guy told us you can't weld a frame. Right. So no, I remember. Okay, uh, I've asked Elise, Elise to draw up a uh, local law that we have to do at a meeting for the room tax. Uh, that was passed many, many months ago. It, it's something that, and I should have been on it sooner than this, but uh, uh, mark, I, I would mark it up to the, what the state is saying. We can go to five. I mean, why, why should we do three? Why should we do three? The only thing I would note is that it may take some time for... The, probably the local hotel owners are going to have to adjust their rates. Yeah. So they'll have yeah. to adjust to an additional five versus an additional three or four. Mm -hmm. it's up to the, the program board. something into their computer. Now, does this cover B&Bs? Mm -hmm. It covers everything. Mm -hmm. And Except, we all know yeah. where the B&Bs are located? No. No, they're all well, How do we know? I don't no, know. Well, no, it doesn't no. here. No. Only, well, well, only registered. Yeah. Yeah. Only, only registered ones are. Yeah. yeah. But there is a lot of illegal ones around the falls. Yeah, but but so, but that the Airbnbs. Goes, Airbnbs. They're yeah. Airbnbs. No, not B and B's. Excuse right. me. Yes. Airbnb. Okay. So Airbnb. So Airbnb. 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 So a five percent is that mm -hmm. the drug? Doing a full five? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not local people. 
No, I know. People don't even. Who collects the money? You guys collect the money. It's a tax. So how how do I do that? It's got to be through the county, right? Mm -hmm. You rented you rented two hundred rooms, and how do I how do I how how, how do I get it? And you have to. We'll find out. Look at the I, I agree with you. I don't know. I don't know that part. Okay. Right. But everyone else is doing it. And we don't so have to reinvent the wheel because Woodbury's no. doing it. Yeah. Everyone else is doing yeah. it. Right. Yeah. So it might be worth a call into Woodbury to see how they yeah. figure it out. Because it's, it's based on how, how much yes. they're renting oh. out, so you have to figure out. You have to either get their books or there has to be some. And it only covers work. here, not the Falls. Hmm. And that's it. 5% is actually low. I'm I'm traveling traveling a lot of the county gets it. But that's a different yeah, it's that's a state tax. It's, it's, it's a combination of state tax and uh, oh, wow. but but yeah. under the local under, under the legislative yeah, cool. authority, yeah. mm -hmm. you can only do five percent. Okay, uh, electric chargers, uh, nothing for you guys. I'm waiting on a we're waiting on a part. I got this has been going on for a long time, a part for the we have the gadget for up there, the electric charger, but there was a piece that wasn't there or whatever, and they're waiting for this other piece so that we can start to charge. We just have to figure out how much we want to charge. 25 cents. I don't know how it works. I, if they, you break it down to kilowatts, and I don't know how to do that. Uh, I'll, I'd like to show you the... I think we did. I did. Uh, yeah, sheet. you did. There's a sheet of paper. And it was like 18, 20 cents. 18 to 20 cents is what yeah. it's costing you. Yeah. 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 Do, yeah so we don't want to make... Um, uh, no. Me, I wouldn't want to make a bunch of money. No, no, no. If it's 20 cents, it's a quarter. Yeah, no, 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 no. All right, All right. But do we look at those other ones too? Uh, well, she, uh, I was going to say if you're talking about uh, uh, Melanie was yeah. supposed to look at. Yeah, she was. She looked at she had all the information. Yeah. Right? Really? And then we had to find out if we had a contract. We you do, but it's non-exclusive. Oh, okay, okay, that's yeah. Because remember, you were going to look into it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Next thing I have is the village hall repairs. Um, there's a you all know a little bit. I know a lot. Gina knows <coughs> all. Um, there's a lot of repairs. You know, we walk in here and everything looks okay, but it's not okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking right up here. Yeah, it's right. not good. So, all I'm saying to you is eventually that rooster is going to come home and you're either going to have to spend money to fix everything or, or put band-aids, and I'm not saying that's wrong, or go buy key bank. <laughs> uh, bank. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I, I heard it's one point eight million. For yeah, that's what he wants, but he's not going to get it. Right. He's not going to get that. Uh, well, I, I, I would say, listen, if if we have, I know we have funds in Village Hall Reserve. Yeah. And you know, maybe we have to start. Yeah. You know. Start yeah. Doing so five I, windows I, I, a year, actually, or ten windows a year, or a, do actually, the roof. Oh, 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 actually, my thirty seconds of comments about the repairs needed was. Thinking inside, downstairs, here, you know, third floor. Uh, but I'm also, but also I want to bring up outside. You know, we go buy it all. I go buy it 50 times a day. Yep. But if I stop and look at the village hall, it's terrible. It does look it's shabby. Really bad. Yeah. You really have to stop and just look. And in three seconds, you'll say, "Yep." Meaning it has to either be shed of the paint or repaint. One or the other. One or the other. It'd be nice to go back down to the brick. You know, yeah, it would be. Uh, I mean, that'd be absolutely beautiful. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Uh, well, I just want you to be aware. Some, you know, smart. some repairs might. Yeah, cheap. <laughs> if you go back down to the brick, you, I mean, the guy that's doing Four Mountain Avenue came and looked at the whole building, and he said that you're looking at any hundred thousand dollar job just to go back. Yeah, all day long. Yeah. yeah. And to repoint. I mean, it was eight hundred. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, I'm going to play that number tonight. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Okay, uh, so I just want you to be aware that, you know, the repairs, it's, it's, not, it's not pretty. Okay, um, uh, LED lights, we got to move on these LED lights come spring. Yes, and, and I'll reach out to him again. I mean, we are in the 2%, you know, that's going to be, uh, he was supposed to send me out an email. Well, this month he sent out an email, so I will give him a call next week. I still have all the information on that. We could not get underneath the old program. Uh, because of COVID, we tried to get the, the buy back, and that did not work. So, but we are on that list for all the LED lights on there. All right. Um, 
Can I just ask a question? Is it all of them or a percentage? It's a percentage. It's a percentage that, that they're doing, yes. Yeah. So right now, if we call in a light, you know, that's out, they are putting an LED in it. Mm -hmm. So, but we're, you know, so, but the other ones are 2% that they're going to do every year they're working on, and that's what they're going to call it. Yes, they did the one across from your house too, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, because I called that in and I got that called in there. Thanks. So. I called the one on COVID. It took a couple months, but I got it. All right. Um, I'm not complaining, though. I want that mark. Uh, the grant money that we had received from James Scoofus for Roe Park, um, we did a lot of, we did what the grant said we could do. And there's like 2,000, a tad over 2,000 left. <clears throat> so we want to get rid of that. So um, I've been talking to Karen Willis, who's the head lifeguard or something over there, mm -hmm. and she's come up with a couple of things that she needs. Like one thing is a long bench goes down the whole length of one side for people to sit, take their shoes off, put their shoes on, whatever. Want to sit? We could easily spend two thousand. So I'll, over the winter, I'll get together with her again and come up with a real list, and uh, we'll spend that money because we have to. Because that was part of real part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Elise is looking and talking to the town eventually Justin down there with the fire department tax break yeah I looked into that um, some more and I'm glad you gave this to me today uh, Regina because I could not find where the in the in the law itself in the state law where the ambulance uh, uh, people were covered as well volunteer ambulance so um, I'll take a look at this when I get home Hmm. And you do want firefighters and ambulance, hmm. is that correct? We don't have ambulance. The town has well, a town ambulance. Has ambulance. We, that's our fire department, yes. Okay. Just for us is fire. Okay. Okay, well then then there's a separate provision that just covers But could areas. you still do it for ambulance people who live in the village? I don't think so. No, okay. They, or well, we're, in the, we're in well, the district. Yeah. Well, we're look the, into that. We're in the ambulance district. There's yeah. not many. I would think the town would cover them under the town's yeah. tax. Well, but it's 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 their it's a tax break on their property, okay. so it may in fact be. It's ten percent, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, I'll I'll make. Yeah, sure. we might have to look that because, like you said, we do have. They're not going to give them a tax break. Well, it might be for a tax break for the town, though, right? Yeah, yeah. they have to do own, their own local law. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. They have to do their own local law. Okay, so Lisa, looking at that, I would like all of you to talk to your departments about training. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen any training come in here. Everything from flagging, I mean, the guy just got mm -hmm. hit, to, to everything. Whatever training is out there, OSHA training. Can I, I have a... Hopefully local, it's lo more local training. I, I have, um, we do a lot of work for the... Um, International Labor's Union over in Brewster, and they actually have a training facility right in Brewster for those types of things. I can get you some information on. Okay. Like, oh, yeah. But it's a quick. It would be. I mean, you can even potentially have somebody come here and do a, you know, a training event for something. For I people. would if they if it was a work day and they all had to go. Yes. Yeah, then they all have to go. Yeah. I mean, as long as they get a certificate after, mm -hmm. it is what it is. It's very good training too. It's a, they're. they're they, they yeah, do it. How much are they going to cost? I have no idea. No, no, no. But no, it's, you know, we, we definitely have to do a training, update training. It should be in your file. It's so not it's required it. annual. It's supposed to be. It is required. Typically, you, if I if I was watching your DPW right now, I'd say I want everybody to have my, their 40 hour OSHA course, I want everybody to have their 10 hour OSHA course. I want everybody to have, you know, every year doing professional development, which would be. You can take in the flaggers course, taking you know two or three other courses. Well, the minimum they should have the the, the, the forty hour refresher. I don't know if that they have any of those. All right, well that's a John question. Yeah, I, I, they could. I don't know. I'm just saying I, that that's. Yeah, no, I got it. You know, I, I would think your your insurance company every year is asking that information too. All right, we'll check. I don't know or not. All right, I have uh, a couple of uh, executive session issues on personnel. So, if I could have a motion, motion to come out of the regular meeting, go into executive session on personnel, and then come back into a regular meeting. Make a motion to come out of executive session for personnel. Go into. Go into. Go into. Go into. All in favor? Hold. All yes. in favor? Yes. Opposed? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you.
I'm okay. Okay. I'm okay. Oh, okay. Um, oh, happy new year. Happy new year. Yeah.